we're going to look at a couple of examples of how to use integral tables in order to evaluate some of these uh, very special integrals. Um, these integrals are usually evaluated using things like in, uh, trigonometric substitution and those sorts of things, but instead of having to go through all those steps, because some of them are rather messy, uh, the back of your book, uh, the web, for example, has these listed out for us. So the first we're going, one we're going to look at is the integral of dx over x squared radical x squared plus 16. Now when you look at these tables of integrals, they're categorized. You'll see some that have trigonometric functions, you'll see some that have logarithms, exponential functions, um, and in this case what we would look for is something that involves radicals, and notice that underneath the radical we have a quadratic. So what we'll do is we'll look for a table or an integral with that form. And here I found in the back of my calculus text this particular formula. And it seems to match what we have here. We have something squared outside the radical, and then on the inside we have a quadratic of the form u squared plus a squared. We have x squared plus 16. Okay, different order. It's also a different variable because sometimes you might have to make an initial substitution in order to get it into the proper form. But we're okay. Um, our x is just like their u. So all we have to do is identify what the value of a is, and since we have a squared and 16, a must be equal to 4. And now it's just a matter of plugging things in. So we're going to get the opposite of 4 squared plus u squared over 4 squared times u. So it's the opposite of radical 16 plus x squared all over 16x plus our constant. So that's a very straightforward one. We just looked up the formula and found the appropriate value of a. The next example will be a little bit more complex in that we have to do an initial substitution. So here's our integral, and if you look at your table of integrals, it's very unlikely you would see anything with a quadratic um, exponential function. And when I say quadratic exponential function, you need to keep in mind that e to the 2x is the same as e to the x quantity squared. So it's a quadratic in e to the x. Which leads me to believe that I'm going to need to make a substitution u equals e to the x. So we start off with that substitution, du is e to the x dx. Now initially, initially we might panic because I don't see the e to the x up there with the dx. But e to the x is equal to u. So I'm going to first solve for dx. dx is du over e to the x just by dividing by e to the x, and I replace e to the x by u. So where I see the dx up in the integral, I can replace that by du over u. And so again, our integral becomes dx, which is du over u. We change the e to the x into u, and e to the 2x into u squared. So now I have it in a simpler formula. Again, I look to see what's available in my table of integrals. I've got a radical. Outside the radical we have uh, just a single power of u. And then inside the radical, I've got a quadratic in u, and the coefficient of u squared is negative. So I'll look for something that fits that form. And here's the one that we need. Okay, I've got the u outside, I've got the minus u squared, and then I've got 2AU on the inside there. And this formula is what appears in my book. I just need to use A equals 9 because 2A is going to be 18, so A must be 9. So here's where we are at this point. Here is our integral. And so it's going to be 2A times U. So 18U minus U squared minus U squared. A times U in the denominator, 9U in the denominator. Now we need to keep in mind that u is equal to e to the x. All we do is substitute, and we'll get 18 e to the x minus 2 e to the x, e to the 2x that is, excuse me, 18 e to the x minus e to the 2x all over 9 e to the x plus c.